everyone. We've been doing a lot of work each week in geometry. We've talked about the different types of lines. We've got a line or line segments. We've got array. We've also talked about angles, acute, right, obtuse. Well, in geometry, there's also rules. And with some of those rules, it can be helpful to determine what they mean through, or explain what they mean through algebraic terms. Think of, for example, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Anyone remember what that's called? It's the Pythagorean theorem. Well, we use algebraic terms, uh, the letters a, b, and c, to describe what the theorem, what that rule is saying. Well, today I'm going to tell you about one of the people that made algebraic rules for geometry possible. Not only was he a mathematician who was known as the father of analytical geometry, he was also a famous philosopher. His name? René Descartes. René Descartes was born in La Haye, France on March 31st, 1596. Descartes was taught at home up until his, he was eight years old, but that, at that point, he entered a Jesuit college called Le Fleche, where he continued his schooling until graduating at the age of 18. Like many great thinkers of his time, Descartes was involved in many things. He's very well known for his idea, I think, therefore I am. Have you ever heard that before? I wonder what that really means. Maybe you should think about it. Does that then prove that you are? Oh, anyways. He also published a book called Discourse de la Méthode, or Discourse on Method. One of the appendices of this book was called Le Geometry. And what do you think that means? Geometry. It was in Le Geometry that Descartes introduced something called the Cartesian plane to the world. And now we often call this the coordinate plane. Now, how on earth did he come up with this? That's what I'd like to know. Well, there's a story, of course. While doing his schooling at Le Fleche, Descartes suffered many health problems. Bummer. But because of this, his teachers allowed Descartes to stay in bed for most of the morning. Even though that meant he missed all of his morning classes, he was still able to keep up with all of his studies. Maybe he kept a work journal. He clearly managed his time very well. Anyways, it has been rumored that Descartes' inspiration for the coordinate plane came about all because of the time he spent in bed. The story goes that one day when Descartes was in bed, he noticed a fly on his ceiling and it was just crawling around. It would get up and it would fly to a different spot on his ceiling. And he tried to think of ways to describe where the fly was located and realized that he could do so by describing the fly's position by its distance from each wall. Then he tried to relate the fry, fly's position to a point and well, one thing led to another and voila, he came up with the coordinate plane and Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates are used to locate a point in space by giving it a relative distance from two perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines mean that they intersect. Any point, line, or figure can be precisely located whoops, by referencing these axes. The horizontal axis is called the x-axis. And the vertical axis is called the y-axis. I always remember that this is the y-axis because the letter y has that little tail that drops down just like a vertical line does. Anyways, the four coordinate plane, as you see, creates four different quadrants. And they all are have a special name. 
we label them with their new Roman numerals. So coordinate one, I'm sorry, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Think about the word quad, quadrilateral, quarter. How many other words can you think of that start with that quad prefix? Well, we remember that whatever that you're referring to refers to quad meaning four. Anyways, in this system that Descartes created, he created something called coordinate pairs or an ordered pair, which describes the location of any point on the coordinate plane. Now, anytime we describe those coordinate points, we follow the same pattern, x, comma, y. The first value is the x coordinate, which describes where on the x axis the point is located. But by using the Cartesian coordinate system, any point on the plane can be described using a pair of coordinates, even where the two lines intersect. That point right here has a special name, 0, 0. Now, let's clear some of this stuff aside and take a look a little further about how we label points. So right here, I have the coordinate point 8, 5. Well, I know that the first number represents the location on the x-axis. So I always like to start at my origin. And I will move to find 8. Then my x number is 5. So I can move up my point to 5. So here, where my star is, is the point 8, 5. Let's try a different point. Let's look at negative 7, 3. All right, so let's start at our origin point here. And negative 7. So as you see, our number line, the numbers are labeled. And so if I go to the right of the origin on the x-axis, the numbers increase in value. If I go to the left, they decrease in value and get smaller into the negative realm. So we start going negative to negative 7. And then here, it tells us that our y-coordinate is positive 3. So I can go up 1, 2, 3. And this is our point, negative 7, 3. Now the location of many things can be determined by giving a set of coordinates. I mean, think about that geometry lesson we had the other day, where the location of cities, countries, or ships at sea could be found by sets of coordinates. Do you guys remember what those lines were called that helped us define where those coordinate points were on a map? Latitude and longitude. Another application of ordered pairs is the, that computer graphic artists create figures and computer animations by referring to coordinates. So what else are ordered pairs used for in the real world? Well, anyways, think about it. And next time you use one of those coordinates, think of Rene Descartes and that silly fly that was driving him crazy as he was trying to rest when he was sick in bed at school. Anyways, have fun exploring.